So, as many of you might be aware, a while back we got the news that Percy Jackson and the Olympians was being made into a fully-fledged live-action TV series on Disney+. After years of hope and uncertainty after the disaster that was the feature film adaptation, I think the fandom at large was quite eager for a chance for the franchise to get some redemption, and to grow even more popular than it was before, and so, when Fox was bought out by Disney, and the first rumblings were heard, I won't lie, I got excited. I kind of figured that it should be an animated series, you know, so that you can easily include a lot of the more fantastical elements, while still being able to maintain a more realistic budget. Because after all, if we're being honest, Percy Jackson is a relatively unproven franchise after a failed film series, and thus I didn't think that Disney would shell out a very deep budget whatsoever. I didn't want the effects to look cheap, but the problem is, there really is a need for a lot of effects in a live action context. There's so many monsters and locations, you know the drill if you've read the book. And so you'd assume that it would have to be a pretty big budget drain, and thus, you'd have to think that the effects would look cheap. Because as I said, I thought the budget would be quite low. So you'd think that an animation would perhaps be the right way to go with this, to ensure that they can do this thing a little bit of justice. But no, that's not what happened. Instead, it was announced that they seem to be going full steam ahead with a live-action adaptation, which, well, yeah, at first I shook my head as I figured they'd just churn out some low-budget garbage. And then, after it doesn't do well, they'd notice that it's not getting any traction, and then they'd promptly cancel it, and, you know, it would be a shame. The end. But of course, they'd have other franchises to be getting on with, whilst we get to sit there, weeping about how it all went so wrong, twice. And so that was me for a good couple of months. There'd be news about scripting and casting, all that sort of stuff, and I didn't really care all that much. I was in my slump. And then I started seeing posts and news all turning up in my feed, and I tried to ignore it, but the more I saw, the more that I started to think that perhaps this might end up being not so bad after all. They seem to genuinely be putting a lot of effort into this thing, bringing in the author to assist and produce, ensuring that the story is faithful as possible to the original source material because ultimately that was one of the major issues that a lot of people had with the original. It didn't feel like Percy Jackson. For example, one of these big early problems, character ages. In the original story, Percy's like 12, but in the film he's clearly like 18 or close to it. And thus, the whole tone of the story begins to shift. Persephone seducing Grover? What? What even is that? Ugh. But yeah, it feels like here, the showrunners are actually doing everything they can to capture the proper vibe of the books. Yeah, there's been some backlash about some decisions, but they seem to be coming at this from a place of passion, rather than just trying to milk a franchise that you suspect might be the next big thing. And so you can't help but be optimistic, and it's a pretty big feat for me. As usually, I tend towards being a bit skeptical about a project like this as a general rule. However, when there's genuine passion towards a project, usually that means it has a much better chance of actually turning out something half decent, as opposed to your general run-of-the-mill crap. But that being said, that doesn't mean that I don't have some general thoughts on how things should play out and what they need to do. And there's honestly a lot of potential pitfalls that I think they're going to be facing. So really, that's what this video is aiming to do. Just air a few of my concerns about the upcoming adaptation and work through how they might overcome them. Okay, so we'll start with the obvious. Monsters, gods, lightning bolts, centaurs, satyrs, you know the drill. To achieve all of that, you're going to have to lean quite heavily onto your visuals, whether that's practical effects and costumes like prosthetics and explosions and whatever, or whether that's visual effects to achieve what you want in post-production. It's clear that this thing needs a lot of work to make the world come to life, and for that to happen, the project needs money, a big-time budget. After all, just from a monster's perspective, we're talking a minotaur, medusa, echidna, a chimera, they need to show godly forms, have Percy manipulate water in battle, a magical pen sword, hellhounds, you know, a not tacky looking underworld. That's already a whole lot of stuff. And so yeah, there's really no two ways about this. In order to have the show not look like a discount bargain bin type of show, it needs a proper budget. Hell, even high budget films and shows can often come away with terrible CGI that looks embarrassing. Probably because they underpay and rush the VFX artists, honestly. And a lot of those franchises were filled with passionate creators too. And Disney has been known as of recently to not exactly treat their visual effects artists very well at all. And in all honesty, the quality seems to have dipped as a result in a number of their films and TV shows. You know, the visual quality, that is. The narrative and all that, that's a separate issue. And thus, this is probably the major element that I feel like the show has the potential to fumble. High budget or no. And really it could go a long way into making or breaking the story. But of course, there really isn't much to be done about that from a creative standpoint. You know, you've got to give more time and money to your VFX workers. That's the only thing for it. But of course, that's not the only concern I have here. Really, the other major aspect of this, 
needs to be the narrative, the story. Can they make a better adapted story than what's come before? And I'm a little bit on the fence, because on one hand, they do seem to be involving the author more. It's his world, and he knows how it should be. And when they shut him out of the movies, they did turn to shit. What a shocker. They also have age-appropriate casting. They're involving a widespread of characters that were seen in the book itself, so that's a plus. And from clips from behind the scenes and whatnot, it seems like they're really putting in the effort in all aspects of production. They have eight episodes, and you'd have to assume that if they want to cram everything in, and indeed, I think they are trying to do that, they'll have to make these episodes run for somewhere in the vicinity of 40 minutes apiece. And I think it's also pretty clear how the story should break down across those episodes. You have your first episode setting things up and getting Percy to Camp Half-Blood. You have episode two dedicated to introducing some side characters and Cam Half-Blood and gods and all of that sort of thing. You know, the expositional episode. And then the rest of the episodes, you hit the road trip arc. They go to find Hades. They battle monsters along the way, whilst also bonding as a team and meeting Ares. You know, the plot of the book. And that's all well and good. And I trust they'll be able to fit all that in. But sometimes I do wonder that perhaps they need more episodes or more time because ultimately they need to add more to the actual narrative because the books, they're told from Percy's point of view. But here, you kind of need extra scenes. Instead of being told about certain things, I think we should see these things. See the reaction of the gods to the existence of Percy. See the elements of the backstory of characters like Annabeth or Grover instead of just being told about them. Scenes with Sally to show what she had to sacrifice, or her younger days romancing Poseidon, something like that. Things that flesh out the world a little bit more, and show the other side of things. Because ultimately, if you don't, you only ever get Percy's point of view. And I think because of that, the show will come across as a little bit two-dimensional. Because in the book, despite it being Percy's point of view in the first series, you get the benefit of it being his internal monologue. Percy's direct thoughts. But when you make that into a script, you lose that extra dimension. And so I think that the best way to regain that depth is to step away from what's in the first book and mix and match things. Add scenes that might have happened off page and flesh out dynamics beyond what we've seen between the trio. Otherwise, I fear the show is doomed to be pretty bland, all things considered. And this, along with bad effects, would just be the nail in the coffin for the future of the adaptation. And that would be a shame. A massive shame. It's been a long time coming. Do not fumble it now. But regardless, with all that being said, I don't really have much else to say. And so I would like to remind you that these have just been my opinions and now I'd like to hear yours. What do you think of the Percy Jackson adaptation? Do you think it's going to be good? Are you worried about it? Any reasons why? I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment, subscribe and let me know.